Chapter 13, What's in a Name? The enclosure was nothing like Baby Cake's enclosure. It was just a dog kennel, a smallish one, blue plastic with a handle on the top and a black grate door that locked. But inside, Mom had made a nice nest out of old ripped up t-shirts. Did you use any of mine, Bad asked. I did, Mom said. I hope that's okay. It's better than okay, Bat answered. If the t-shirts still have my scent, then maybe the kit will bond with me. I don't think we could get your scent out of the t-shirts, even if we tried, Bat, Janie said. That's teasing, said Bat, but he was peering into the enclosure and didn't feel very upset. Did you use any of mine, Mom? Janie asked. No, Mom said. Don't worry. I don't see him, Bat said. I don't see him anywhere. He's definitely in there, Bat, Mom said. The door was latched and everything. And he's still too little to walk anyway. His eyes aren't even open yet. Bat unlatched the door and stuck his hand inside. Yes, there was the kit. Tiny and warm, wrapped in a fold of fabric. He's safe, Bat said. Okay, Bat, Mom said. Latch up the cage and go wash your hands. Let's have a snack. At the table, Janie was smearing peanut butter on crackers. She'd gotten out a second butter knife for Bat. Bat loved peanut butter, but he could never pack peanut butter sandwiches for school lunches because Lynn was allergic to peanuts. The entire slow wet school was a nut free zone. Janie passed a roll of crackers to Bat. Mom had heated water in the kettle and poured out three cups of tea. Tea and tea crackers and peanut butter. Wonderful. I wonder if Stripey will like peanut butter, he said, trying to be casual about the name. You know, when he's all grown up. Stripey, said Janie. Is that what you're calling the skunk? It's a good name, Bat said. It's a really good name. Skunks have stripes. I'm not sure it's a good idea to be naming the skunk, Mom said. She looked concerned with little wavy wrinkles across her squished up forehead. If you name him, it'll get too easy to get attached. And remember, he's only staying with us for a few more weeks. Besides, said Janie, who says you get to name him? I'll bet I could come up with a way better name than Stripey. No, you couldn't, Bat said, stabbing the knife into the peanut butter jar. Stripey is the best name for a skunk. You always want to give things dumb, obvious names, Janie said. Bat felt sharp, hot tears in his eyes. Do not, he whispered. When you were four... You named your teddy bear Barry. And last year, when that stray cat kept coming into our, our yard, you named her Patches. She was a calico, Bat said. Calicos look like they are covered in patches. Janie, Mom said, be nice. Aw, Bat doesn't mind, do you, Bat? asked Janie. Of course Bat minded, but he didn't want Janie to know how much she had hurt his feelings. Well... What would you name the kit, he asked. I don't know. Give me a minute to think about it. Janie munched on her crackers and Mom sipped her tea, but Bat just waited to hear what Janie would come up with. He knew it wouldn't be as good as Stripey, and he couldn't wait to tell her so. I got it, Janie said after a minute. Mom, he was born last Thursday night, right? Mm-hmm, Mom said. And we want him to be big and strong. We're learning about mythology in school. I think we should name the skunk after the biggest, strongest Nordic god. We should name him Thor. Thor, asked Mom. The thunder god, Janie said. It's perfect, see, because they used to celebrate Thor's day, and now we call it Thursday, and that's when the skunk was born. Thor, Bat whispered. Sometimes Janie was annoying. Sometimes she was a mean tease. But sometimes, Bat thought, she was brilliant. Chapter 14, Sleeping Arrangements. I want to sleep on the couch next to Thor. No, Bat, you need to sleep in your own bed, said Mom. Then I want Thor to sleep in bed with me. You can't sleep with the skunk, Bat. What if you rolled over the night and crushed him? I would never do that, Bat said. He never would. Bad honey, the skunk... Thor, interrupted Bat. His name is Thor. Mom rubbed her forehead. Fine, she said, Thor. Thor can't sleep in your bed. Thor is a wild animals. Wild animals don't sleep in beds. 
But in the wild, Thor wouldn't sleep alone, Bat argued. He would sleep in a pile with all his brothers and sisters all cuddled up. I'm glad people don't sleep like skunks, Janie said. Her hair was damp from the shower, and she was still wearing her favorite pajamas, the one with all the unicorns. Each unicorn was doing something different. One rocked out with a guitar, another was reading a book, another wore a chef's hat and was flipping eggs in a pan. The only thing they had in common was that they were all unicorns. Janie, did you know that a herd of unicorns is called a blessing? Bat asked. Yes, Bat, of course I knew that. Every time I wear these pajamas, you tell me that. Well, I didn't know if you remembered, Bat said. You're the only one who remembers, excuse me, you're not the only one who remembers things, Bat said Janie. Then she stomped off to her room. Bat turned back to Mom. Please, he begged. No, said Mom in her firm voice, but Bat knew Mom's firm voice. Sometimes if he pushed hard enough, he could change it into her soft voice, the one that let him have his way. I could be the one to feed him, and you could sleep all night, Bat said. I know how to do it. Who do you think took care of you when you were a baby and had to eat every two hours, Bat? Mom asked. I took care of you and Janie. I can take care of one little skunk. If you let me help, Bat said, bargaining now, I'll promise to scrape all the extra food off my plate from now on and put it in the dishwasher after dinner. Mom smiled. I thought it was too gross to look at leftover food stuck to a plate. It is too gross, Bat said, but I'll do it anyway. Even if it made him gag, even if it made him throw up. Besides, Bat said, I helped Thor go to the bathroom after he finished eating. If I can do that, I can do other gross things. Mom had taught Bat that baby skunks don't know how to go to the bathroom on their own when they're little babies, and if they don't pee and poop, they can die. In nature, their mother would help them learn, but since Thor was an orphan, every time he drank his formula, someone had to hold him up and rub his bottom with a wet cotton swab until he pooped and peed. At school, Bat had been helping clean up Baby Cape's enclosure for a while now, and poop and pee were just part of having an animal. I'll tell you what, little Bat, Mom said. Her voice was softer now. Thor has to sleep in his enclosure, and I'm going to take care of him during the night. But you can be in charge of his daytime feedings when we're home. And, after, after, and tomorrow after school, instead of staying home with Janie, how about you come by the clinic? I'm going to weigh and measure Thor to make sure he's getting enough to eat and you can help. Okay, said Bat, for now. But when Thor gets bigger, big enough that I couldn't squish him in bed, let's revisit this conversation. That was something Mom said when she wanted Bat to know that they weren't done talking about something. And Bat wanted Mom to know that he wasn't giving up on sleeping with Thor. Mom laughed. You drive a hard bargain, she said, and I don't think I'm going to forget about the dishes. Chapter 15, Dr. Jerry Dragoo. Later in his room, when he was supposed to be sleeping, Bat climbed out of bed and pulled his animal encyclopedia from the shelf. He flipped to the letter S section and found the page labeled skunk. At the top of the page was a glossy picture of a large black and white skunk nosing along a patch of dirt. In the background of the picture were hundreds of white and yellow daisies. Below the picture were a bunch of questions and answers about skunks. What do skunks spray? Skunks spray an oily liquid from glands underneath their tails as a defense. Their spray doesn't cause any real damage, but boy, is it stinky. A skunk smell can be detected by a human from a mile away. Where do skunks live? Skunks can make many places their home. Abandoned burrows constructed by other animals, a hollow log, even underneath your house. What are skunks predators? Lots of mammals, including foxes, coyotes, and domestic dogs, will attack a skunk if they get hungry enough, though only as a last resort, because it's difficult to attack a skunk without the smelly reminder of it. But aerial predators, large birds like owls, don't care so much about the scent. For one thing, it's hard for a skunk to spray at an attacker from the sky. For another, many birds of prey have little to no sense of smell. 
Finally, Bat got to the last and most important question. Do skunks make good pets? Skunks are wild animals, and wild animals belong in the wild. But according to world skunk expert Dr. Jerry Dragoo, head of the Dragoo Institute for the Betterment of Skunks and Skunk Reputations, while skunks in general do not make good pets, what makes a good pet is a good pet caretaker. Bat closed the book. He put it back on the shelf right where he always put it next to his Lego pyramid. Dr. Jerry Dragoo, world skunk expert. Bat liked that name. He liked doctors because they usually knew lots of useful stuff. He liked the name Jerry because it was the same as that funny mouse in the old cartoons. But the one who always outsmarted the cat and Dragoo reminded him of Dragon. Of course, there was probably no such thing as dragons, but there might be. Dr. Jerry Dragoo. That was someone Bat would like to meet. Chapter 16, A Correspondence. The next day when it was time for recess, Israel stopped at Bat's desk instead of going outside with the rest of the class and asked, hey Bat, do you wanna play four square or something? No, said Bat. He was still sitting at his desk. No, you don't want to play Foursquare? No, I don't want to play anything, Bat answered. All the other kids had left the classroom, and Bat really wanted Israel to leave too so that he could talk to Mr. Grayson in private. But Israel kept standing there like he was waiting for something. Well, do you want to go outside and just not play anything? No, Bat said. I don't. Israel stood to the um, next to the desk for a minute, moment longer, sort of smiling, like he was waiting for Bat to say something more. But what could he be waiting for Bat to say? In his head, Bat ran through the list of things that he was supposed to remember to say to people. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Please. May I? Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Bat said. Um, okay, said Israel. And he shrugged, and then finally he left. After Israel was gone, Bat went up to Mr. Grayson's desk. Mr. Grayson had a stack of their current events listed. Uh, in, excuse me, Mr. Grayson had a stack of their current events assignments in front of him, and he was making comments on each one in green felt tip pen. Mr. Grayson, Bat said, "I need your help." Mr. Grayson put the cap on his pen and set it down. "I'm all ears," he said. That was a funny expression. For a second, Bat pictured Mr. Grayson made entirely of ears, with ears for eyes and ear for a nose and two little rows of ears for teeth. Well, said Bat, let me tell you about Thor. And then Bat told Mr. Grayson everything about the skunk kit, about how mom had brought him home after his mother had died, about how he drank puppy formula because there's no skunk formula, about how he went to the bathroom and how he needed to eat every two hours, and how when mom first brought him home, he was almost all pink, but now his black fur was starting to grow in, and most of all, how Bat loved him. Sounds pretty great, Mr. Grayson said. Yes, said Bat. He is more than pretty great. He is all the way great. So how can I help you, Bat? There's a world skunk expert named Dr. Jerry Dragoo, and I want to ask his advice about something. It's important. Okay, said Mr. Grayson. He pushed the stack of papers to one side and pulled his laptop from his satchel. He opened it and logged on. That was one of the great things about Mr. Grayson. If you said you needed help, he just helped without a lot of annoying questions. There's only one Dr. Jerry Dragoo, said Mr. Grayson. He's a professor at a university. We can write him an email if you want. That's his address right there. Could it really be this easy? Could Bat really just write to the skunk expert? Bat liked to send emails. He sent emails every month to his grandmother who lived in Idaho because he hated talking on the phone. Emails gave you time to think. Okay, said Bat. What do you want it to say? I can type for you. Mr. Grayson clicked on his email icon and clicked in the address. That's all right, said Bat. I like to type. Mr. Grayson let Bat sit in his chair. Bat typed. Dear Dr. Jerry Dragoo. 
Mr. Grayson said, you can just write Dear Dr. Dragoo. People don't usually use the person's first and last names when they start a letter. People don't usually have a name as cool as Dr. Jerry Dragoo, Bat said. Mr. Grayson laughed. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Bat went on. My mom brought home a baby skunk. She is a vet, and she had to help him be born. His mother died, but she didn't have any diseases, and neither does he. His name is Thor. I want to keep him as a pet because I know I can be a good pet caretaker. Even if I can't keep him forever, I want to at least keep him until he goes back home to the wild, not give him to the skunk rescue people. Please write back and say I can so I can tell my mom that a world skunk expert says yes. Then she'll probably let me keep him. Is that okay, Bat asked? Mr. Grayson didn't answer right away, so Bat turned to look at him. Mr. Grayson's face was squished up like he was trying not to laugh, or maybe like he was going to cry. Mr. Grayson, Bat asked, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong, Bat. It's a very nice email. I'll be interested to hear what Dr. Dragoo says. Me too, said Bat. At the end of the email, he typed, sincerely, Bixby Alexander Tam. Parentheses, people call me Bat.